All right, I'm staying focused. Are Embiid and Harden the best duo in the NBA, Chene? They are, and I know it is a complicated answer because you have Chris Paul and Devin Booker out there balling. Um, anytime you have a healthy LeBron James and Anthony Davis, you would say that they're the best duo, but the reality here is that Joel Embiid is the MVP, you know, two-thirds through the NBA season. This guy is putting up 29 points per game, 11 rebounds a game, and there's no area of the floor, both offensively and defensively, that he has not dominated. Off the dribble, hitting mid-range, the, you know, Hakeem dream shake he has in the post, reading the double team, knocking down threes, diving on the floor for loose balls. All right, now you pair him with James Harden, who, mind you, when we talk about Philly, we've always been saying, we need that guard that can pair perfectly with Joel Embiid for them to really be contenders and get off, you know, get the ghost of playoffs pass off their back. Well, they've got a guard that is a former MVP. I know a lot of people are gonna say he's having a down year, but imagine your down year being 20 and eight. And we love when James Harden plays motivated. Mm. We've seen what he's able to do, turn into that MVP in Houston. We saw, you know, glimpses, but then there was a lot of complications in Brooklyn. This one-two punch where the NBA is really played in the pick and roll, if James comes with his A game and Joel B stays healthy and keeps doing what he's doing, this should be the best one-two tandem, considering that LeBron James and AD removed from contention based on, you know, the lack of AD's health. Chris Paul, Devin Booker, two guards, but I see an area where every aspect of the game is touched, and that's in Philly. See, Shanae, I love this argument right now because you said an operative word. This should be, right? I think that's oh, a different conversation yes. than what actually <laughs> is. And look, I don't deny the innovative style that James Harden has brought to the table. Like, this brother is one of the most dynamic offensive players the game of basketball has ever seen. He's reimagined how we even look at the sidestep and handles. I get all that. And by the way, Joel Embiid is one of the most skillful seven-footers the game has ever seen. I even made comparisons before that Akeem Olajuwon used to work with Kobe Bryant on footwork. And I know Drew Hanlon, who is Joel Embiid's trainer. They work out. And if you actually pay attention to all of Joel Embiid's moves, it's so similar out of the pinch post and out of the lower post position, but how he operates very similarly to Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan. So I don't knock their individual skill at all. What I do worry about here is, is it actually coming to fruition? And I think a lot of that is going to be dependent upon Doc Rivers because both these guys are used to operating with the ball being in their hands all the time. Like, so I used to talk about, hey, Joel Embiid, James Harden, could it be utilized in the pick and roll? Because it should be dynamic. It should be off the charts. But Joel Embiid doesn't really like to participate in a lot of pick and rolls. And I see James Harden. So what's used your to answer, Will? I'm coming. I'm coming, Shanae. I'm coming. James Harden likes to have the ball dancing That's all the time. That's what I'm waiting on. So I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you guys, the most dynamic duo in the game right now, if they're on the court together, is Kevin Durant and, and Kyrie Irving. I Good mean, they're... If. I see what you're doing. Oh. Yeah, okay. It's oh. A, it, you had an if, you had a oh. should, so I can have a should too or if, right? Oh. But I've seen them on the court together. I know what that is when they dominate. I, I've seen them dominate. You're talking about the most prolific score the game has ever seen. You're talking about a basketball wizard with the ball. I know what style of offense they play and continuity and how they pick their spots. I've seen it before. So should be is different than what actually is because I've seen it before. Okay, here we go. I'm disappointed in both of y'all. I'm disappointed in you, Tanae. I'm disappointed in you, Jay Will. Let me tell you why. Tanae, you said if, should, Jay, you, if Kyrie's able to be on the court, this and well, this. Well, he is on the court. Well, guess what, game. ladies this and gentlemen? Games. Well, I, I understand that, but guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Chris Paul and Devin Booker on the damn court all the time together. Devin Booker right now averaging 25 points. Chris Paul, 15 and 10. Mm. Top, top five in steals. Right, not to mention, those guys made it to the NBA Finals last year, right? Am, am I right or am I wrong? You're right. They made it to the NBA Finals last year. So why would they not be the best duo? Now, it, it's, now can't, does Harden, does Embiid have the potential to one day be the best at some point this season? It's a possibility. But it's also a possibility that it won't happen. It's also a possibility that it won't work. I know what I, I have seen work. I've seen Devin Booker and Chris Paul work. Mm. I've seen Chris Paul get that ball to Devin, Devin Booker in the sweet spot. I've seen Chris Paul make a difference with leadership on that team. 
right? And it all started back when they was in the bubble, right? That team, that team had a, they finished off the season very, very well. So they came in last year saying, you know what? I think we can be great. Chris yeah. Paul came on that team, showed his leadership, got them to the finals. Now, let me tell you the difference between this year. They know they can be great. So they, their mindset is different. So I like Chris Paul and Devin Booker. Not to mention, they, are, they have the best record in the NBA. Not just the West, they have the best record you in see, the NBA right now. Harry, 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 I think your argument really applies to Jay Will because when we're talking about backcourts, no one has been more dominant consistently mm -hmm. than that Phoenix Suns backcourt. And uh, they have players that are available to play most games. I think Chris Paul's only missed like one or two games so far this season. Devin Booker has flown under, under the radar, but both of them have done tremendous things. But that, to me, is where it pertains, the backcourt. KD, Kyrie, we have not seen much of that so far this season. And so that's why when I'm thinking of Joel Embiid and James Harden, yes, we have not seen it actualized yet. But right now you have probably the most dominant player in the NBA apart from Giannis and Ja. But the realism is that, you know, Joel is putting his team on his back. I think they're fifth in the East. Now he got better with having James Harden. And I know, I know you saw James Harden and those pictures coming from Philly and how he's cheesing and how he's working out. Like, you can tell that there's going to be a push happening through Philly in a way that we saw a push very similar to what, you know, with Phoenix. I, my answer is, you know, a duo that if you're going to take two on two, that can dominate all aspects of the game, offensively and de defensively. And to me, that is the one-two punch of a point guard that has size, that is a scorer, and a center that is rewriting the rules and skill levels of centers to come. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.